Around 95 million years ago, a new kind of predator emerged. With a heavily armoured body, strong tail, long snout and hundreds of razor sharp interlocking teeth, they soon found themselves at the very top of the food chain pretty much everywhere they went. Today we know them as the crocodilians. With such a huge range, they have evolved into 28 different species. So why are they so successful? Where do they live? And why are they going extinct? Today we'll answer all of those questions and go through every crocodilian, including those which have disappeared in recent times. And out of all crocodilians, the gharial is certainly the strangest. Adapting to eating fish, they evolved an extremely long and slender snout which effectively served as a spear. With 110 sharp teeth, they can slice prey with surgical precision. Even without its snout, the gharial is one of the largest reptiles in the world. The largest ever recorded male measured over 6 meters. Gharials can be found in artwork from 4,000 years ago in the Indus Valley, a time when woolly mammoths still roam the Arctic. Not surprisingly, the gharial is the most evolutionary distinct crocodilian, diverging from all others 38 million years ago. Although restricted to the plains of northern India for most of its existence, during the Ice Age the gharial dispersed far and wide. Using river systems, they spread all the way to Java, which was connected by land at the time. By the end of the Ice Age, they had once again become confined to the rivers of northern India. Threatened by fishing and habitat destruction, by 2006 they had disappeared from 98% of their former range, dropping their population from 10,000 to just 250. Fortunately for the gharial, it got a second chance. Captive breeding and other conservation methods have caused their populations to double since then. Despite being its closest relative, the false gharial evolved its long snout independently. And it was because of this long snout that scientists assumed the false gharial ate fish. But observations in the wild have shown they prey on a wide range of animals, including even monkeys. The group of crocodilians the false gharial belongs to, the Thomas Domine, have been found in the fossil record all across Eurasia. But today, the false gharial is only found on the remnants of Sunderland. The very high rates of deforestation has pushed this species to small fragments of habitat, reducing its population to less than 2,500. Whilst the gharials appear to be relics of a once widespread family, the crocodiles are booming. Comprising the bulk of crocodilian diversity, they include both the biggest and smallest. At just 1.5 meters, the African dwarf crocodiles may seem uninteresting, but they have a secret behavior unlike any of their relatives. Emerging from their burrows as night falls, they are able to avoid competition from larger crocodiles. This nocturnal life means they can't bask, restricting them to the tropical forests of West and Central Africa. Pretty much the exact same distribution as the slender snouted crocodiles. Specializing in fish, they too evolved a long snout. Recent genetic data has revealed the existence of two different species that diverged roughly 7 million years ago. Unfortunately, these relatively harmless animals are critically endangered due to hunting. This rarity, as well as their remote habitat, makes it hard to estimate their population, with estimates ranging from 1 to 20,000. All of the other crocodiles belong to just a single genus, Crocodilus. This highly successful lineage evolved in Africa before spreading to Southeast Asia and the Americas, where the most widespread is the American crocodile, ranging from the southern tip of Florida through Central America and south to Peru. Possessing a broad snout, they are able to feast on a much wider variety of prey. They are also fairly tolerant of salty water, meaning they can travel through the ocean. Despite data being limited, some are between 500 and 1000 live in Florida, and up to 2000 in Central and South America. At some point, a population of American crocodiles settled in the Orinoco River and evolved into the Orinoco crocodile. Historic records allege that the largest males of this species could reach 6.8 meters in length, making them the largest reptile on the planet. Though hunting has reduced their max size 
size to 5.2 meters and the population to around 250. Much smaller, rarely exceeding 2.3 meters, is the Cuban crocodile, the most terrestrial, aggressive, and smartest crocodilian. Although ranging across much of the North Caribbean, today it is restricted to just a single swamp in Cuba. Moralet crocodile is faring much better and is listed as least concern. Usually growing to about 3 meters in length, the jaguar is their only natural predator. To avoid competition with the larger American crocodile, they stick to freshwater inland habitats along the Atlantic side of Mexico, Belize, and Guatemala. And whilst the Moralet crocodile might not scare you, there's a good chance the Nile crocodile will. Africa's largest predator. The most infamous carnivore in the world, it holds the title of deadliest human predator. Although common and not endangered, numbering up to 500,000, it was even more widespread in the past reaching the Mediterranean coast as far as Algeria and Israel. The West African crocodile, despite once considered a subspecies, is a separate species. Surprisingly, however, genetics have shown they aren't close relatives. The Nile crocodile is actually more closely related to the crocodiles of the Americas than its African cousin. Even though this is a recent discovery for us, Ancient Egyptian priests could easily distinguish between the two. Both inhabiting the Nile in ancient times, they knew the West African crocodile was easier to tame. As crocodiles spread from Africa into Asia, they experienced an even greater radiation, diversifying into seven kinds of crocodile. First of all, there is the mugger, another man-eater. Ranging across the Indian subcontinent as far as Iran, its population numbers between 6 and 9,000. First evolving over 4 million years ago, it has remained unchanged, showing just how successful its design is. And although the mugger is considered dangerous, its closest relative, the Siamese crocodile, has never killed a person. Inhabiting the rivers and wetlands of Southeast Asia, the Siamese crocodile specializes in fish, amphibians, and snakes despite having a broad snout. The Siamese crocodile is considered critically endangered and is only found in 1% of its former range. By the 1990s, they were thought to have become extinct in the wild before being rediscovered in Cambodia. A species that is definitely not endangered, however, is the saltwater crocodile. Often exceeding 6 meters and 1,300 kilograms, they are considered to be the biggest reptile on Earth both in length and weight. As its name indicates, the saltwater crocodile is completely tolerant of salty water. This explains the occasional sighting as far as Japan and Fiji. Despite their larger size, there are believed to be up to 200,000 in Australia alone and a total of 400,000 throughout their range. In contrast to this huge population is the Philippine crocodile. Teetering on the brink, there may be less than 100 in the world. At just 2.7 meters, they are not dangerous, although they are still killed due to misinformation. With no government help, captive breeding may be the species' only way out of extinction. It was only recently discovered that two species of crocodile are native to New Guinea, the New Guinea and Hall's New Guinea crocodile. The theory goes that they became isolated when the New Guinea highlands formed and subsequently became separate species. Once considered endangered, they are no longer threatened with a total population of between 50 and 100,000. Their Australian counterpart is the freshwater crocodile. With a more slender snout specialized for catching fish, they are not dangerous to humans and are generally outcompeted by saltwater crocodiles. Living in northern Australia, they often prey upon the invasive cane toad. This may sound great, but cane toads are poisonous, causing many of them to die. Although appearing similar at first, alligators and crocodiles are very distinct, including even their geographical range, which is entirely outside of the tropics. Of the two alligators, the Chinese alligator is the smallest, reaching a max length of only 2 meters. Living in a temperate region, they are forced to adapt to the cold, and the Chinese alligator's main strategy is digging out a massive burrow to brumate, meaning that when summer hits, they have to become nocturnal to avoid the heat. Although once found across the Yangtze Basin, by 1995, the Chinese alligator's population had been reduced to 150. Since then, conservation measures have restored their numbers to 300. 
Even further north lives the American alligator. Despite this higher latitude, they reach double the length of their Chinese cousin. This species has some genius methods of beating the cold. Detecting the rapidly falling temperatures, they stick their snouts above the water and wait for it to freeze, allowing them to breathe whilst trapped under the ice. In 1967, the American alligator was listed as endangered, granting them protected status. Since then, their population has skyrocketed to 5 million and counting. And while alligators may rule the temperate realms, in South America it is the caimans that rule. The dwarf caimans are the second smallest crocodilian at just 1.6 meters. Ranging across the Amazon basin, they coexist with the much bigger black caiman, the region's largest predator. This giant reaches 6 meters in length. Since the black caiman can take down even jaguars, they are at the very top of the Amazon's food chain. However, jaguars often prey upon the spectacled caiman, the most numerous crocodilian with a population in the tens of millions. Closely related is the yacare, who ranges right to the south. Just as abundant, it's estimated that 10 million live in the Pantanal alone, a habitat it shares with the broad-snouted caiman, a species which is known to be an omnivore. Now that we've covered every living crocodilian, it's time to take a look at the fossil record. When people first arrived in Australia, it was, to say the least, a very different place. Giant, 7 meter long lizards, 3 meter tall wombats and marsupial lions stalked these lands. And so did a crocodilian, Quincana. Unlike any species alive today, Quincana was for the most part terrestrial. Unfortunately, this amazing animal died out around 10,000 years ago for reasons scientists are still debating to this day. Long periods of droughts worsened by human activity is the most plausible scenario. Three relatives of Quincana recently lived on some Pacific islands all of whom, along with Quincana, belong to the Mekosukene, an ancient clade with no living members. On Vanuatu and New Caledonia lived two species of Mekosukus. With their small habitats, they were even more vulnerable to humans. On New Caledonia, they disappeared between 3,750 and 1,500 years ago, coinciding with human arrival. Another species known as Volia lived on Fiji. With much fewer remains, it's hard to pinpoint an exact date as the most recent date to the late Pleistocene. But without a doubt, their disappearance had something to do with humans. The human hunting hypothesis is strongest on Madagascar. Around 2,000 years ago, humans arrived and suddenly all the megafauna became extinct, including the Voe. With horn-like structures on its head and a body of 4 meters long, the Voe was Madagascar's largest predator. It was originally thought that the Nile crocodile only reached Madagascar after the Voe's extinction. But remains dating to 7,500 years ago show they coexisted long before humans arrived. The next extinct crocodilian is known from actual historical accounts, Hanisukus. Over the 20th century, crocodile fossils found in southern China were dismissed as those from a modern genus, and historical records of 6 meter reptiles were thought to be saltwater crocodiles. But when carefully examined, something strange was found. The bones weren't from a crocodile at all. Instead, they showed similarities with the gharial. The bones found so far come from individuals estimated at up to 6.2 meters. Their remains have only been uncovered around the Han and Pearl River deltas, where they were likely brought downstream, obscuring their actual range. Historical accounts suggest a much wider range all over southern China, with some mentioning efforts to exterminate them, culminating in the last documented encounter in 1630. If you like extinct animals, you're definitely going to want to watch this video where I go through every extinct animal from the Caribbean. 